you're gonna see the light too, but you can't really drag people out of that when they're in their fanboy phase. It's very hard to do that. You can try to kind of divert their eyes to the truth, but you can't totally change their mind, especially if they're very emotionally invested. Only time wasted and no results prolonged is going to do that. Chest up, shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Fitness, everybody. Your home for gains and brains. And today we're going to have a little bit of fun with this one. But this is a video that really holds true for a lot of people. It's going to be the three stages of lifting mindset that a lot of us go through from the very beginning of the lifting journey all the way into the point where you're pretty experienced. Not the end, because we're going to do this forever, right? But to the point where you kind of aren't as rigidly obsessed with things as you were when you started. And just because you are obsessed and dedicated and really into this as a beginner, guys, that does not mean shit, okay? That does not guarantee you anything. I was very into this whenever I started. Still made barely any progress. There's a lot of people, too, that have very good genetics that know how to train well and they eat well. They kind of take this as like the third or fourth most important thing in their life and they still get very good results. So simply being passionate and dedicated about something does not guarantee you these great results as much as people kind of like to market that as being true. You still need to be smart and know what you're doing. We're trying to work smarter and harder. I think both of those should be happening at the same time. But at the end of the day, I think intelligence and the ability to adapt are always going to beat out 110% rigid, this is how we do things kind of thinking. So with all of that said, let's dive into the first stage of lifting mentality, which is the clueless beginner. And this primarily applies to the general public, the average person who is not an athlete. One of the biggest benefits that most athletes get if you play sports in high school and college, an organized sport with a coach and a weight room and things like that, Unless your team in your school is just totally incompetent, you're going to learn at bare minimum the basics of weight training. But for the average person who is not a serious athlete, which most people are not, you do not get that benefit. And that's how you really fall into the toxic cesspool that is the internet fitness industry. You have no real coaches for guidance and you don't even know what the right questions are to ask and what information to actually find. So naturally you gravitate toward the bodybuilders, the shredded fitness models, the people who get all the attention on social media. I mean, uh, basic, you know, your tests, D-ball, it's just basic stuff. And I am not saying that PEDs alone make champions, guys. That is a very stupid and lazy argument, but we cannot play dumb here. The overwhelming majority of influencers nowadays, especially these teenagers who've been in the gym for six months to a year's time, there's a reason they look like they look in such a short time frame. If these people did not have access to the hormones that they do, they would be nobodies. And a lot of these people too are really genetically gifted. They can train subpar and still get good results. They can recover subpar and still get good results. But they still fundamentally on a baseline level don't know what they're talking about. They just go on camera and flex and buy a Lamborghini and rent a mansion and you know do whatever else you want to do as an influencer. Do donuts in the parking lot in your nice car and people are gonna watch them. Natural, natural, natural. You're just like, how is this guy natural? Well, he's natural, he wouldn't lie about it. He must just have a secret training method. He must just eat that much better than me. He must just work that much harder. That is not the case, guys. So people just follow them indefinitely, forever. And this is really where I would say 90% of the average gym populace stay for their entire training career. Months, years, decades even. They're doing excessive volume, they play hopscotch on the machines. They short the range of motion because they heard their favorite influencers say, constant tension, brah. They're in the gym for seven days a week, three hours at a time, making less progress than somebody who's in there three days a week for an hour at a time. It's a complete mess. And of course, one of the biggest problems, holistically speaking, you develop ab anxiety. Everybody you see is ripped to shreds year round. They're 8% body fat and still hitting PRs on a weekly basis. Naturally, of course. So you want to get bigger and stronger, but you're terrified of losing the abs because you think you're fat if you're above 12% body fat. All of these things place you into novice purgatory. You'll make just enough results to kind of stick with it for a little bit. A little bicep will start showing from your curls, a little bit of back definition from the pull-ups, but that's it. 
You're a hamster stuck on a wheel that is not going anywhere. The fitness industry is such a heaping pile of shit. It's impressive. It's like when Randy Marsh took the world's biggest crap on South Park. Oh, hot, 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 hot. It's an absolute cesspool. And there is good information, especially in recent years, as more educated people and more experienced people get into this space. But all of the good information, at least initially, is buried deep down beneath supplements, fake weights, fake natties, and photos of girls' asses. And even somebody like Noel Dizel, who's very popular now, he's blatantly honest about the PED topic. He still doesn't know how to train. Okay, you guys can look at the video Jeffrey made called I Bought Noel Dizel's Hyper Mass Program. That shit is embarrassing. It is absolute bodybuilding bro science to the highest degree. It is an absolute joke. It's what I just said at the beginning. Seven days a week, a million exercises, constant tension, really slow motion reps. It's a bunch of garbage. And once again, I'm not saying that every influencer and every pro bodybuilder is a liar or an idiot, but a lot of them are. Trying to find good information from these massive channels and massive influencers is like finding a needle in a haystack. You're essentially dumpster diving. I mean, sure, you might find a functioning lamp in the dumpster, but not before you get feces on your hand and tetanus. And eventually, you emerge out of the dumpster and you have an awakening. You're sick of seeing people warm up with your max. You're sick of still looking like you barely lift when you put on a shirt. Once all of those things start to really hit you at one time, especially if you see a girl come in and outlift you, you're gonna change your entire life. And this is when you move in to stage two. You become a barbell supremacist. You're essentially in a hate group. You think anybody that does not use the almighty barbell for all of their training is a terrible person. Because at this point, you've awakened. You've seen all the bad influencers you followed in the past. Now you've probably found starting strength, strong lifts, the Ice Cream Fitness 5x5, one of those basic novice templates that is actually going to get you results with far less than what you were doing before and far more simplicity. You finally learn what works. You learn how to deadlift, how to squat, how to bench press, how to overhead press, how to do rows, how to do pull-ups maybe even some Olympic lifting, depending on the program. You're going to find the way of the barbell, the things that have worked for 50 to 100 years and actually get results considerably and consistently for the first time in your life. You're finally gonna deadlift three or four plates. You're finally gonna bench two plates. You're finally gonna even squat three or four plates. That's right, you're actually gonna do squats now because you no longer skip leg day because that's for <laughs> You're finally getting results but mentally, you're becoming rigid. You see people using dumbbells, cables, machines, exercise balls, everything else is a joke. All of these things are beta. Imagine doing anything besides the standing OHP for your delts. Imagine not doing back squats every single week. You become that person. And this happened to me too, guys. Whenever I was running my first legit novice program, I'll tell you straight up, I ran the Ice Cream Fitness 1.0, I know a lot of you guys get very triggered by Jason Blaha's existence. His program saved me from Athlean X, all right? So you can get triggered all you want by this, but Ice Cream Fitness set me down the path of actually learning weight training. From him, I learned about starting strength. You see what I'm saying? But it took all of the dumpster diving before that, Kali Muscle, Athlean X, Rich Piana, all these guys who were big at the time. I had to go through them before I actually found the way of the barbell. You're always judging people because you know what works now and you have a mental superiority complex because you know what actually works. You go in the gym and you might get results now, but you're judging everybody so harshly because you're no longer in novice purgatory. You're better than everybody, right? Oh, I have it all figured out now. I've got my newbie gains and my intermediate gains and I'm the smartest guy. So that is phase two. You finally learn what works. You learn legitimate weight training and form and programming. You're not scared to eat anymore. You get big and strong. Your genetic strengths are gonna show through. A lot of guys here will get aspirations to go into powerlifting because they're so in love with the barbell at this point. And if you want to, go for it. But that is phase two. You figure out what works and you start to laugh at everybody else who is falling for the stuff you used to fall for. And then, this is the stage I think I've come into now. Stage three is <coughs> zen mode. It's whatever. You're pretty strong now. Depending on your genetics and your PED use, you might be really, really strong by now. But you don't care about it as much. You're not obsessed with the barbell. You're not obsessed with one way of doing things. You really can't even be a barbell supremacist anymore because you simply get too fatigued 
using only barbells. You can deadlift 450 or 500. You can squat 350 or 400. You can bench, some guys can bench 315 plus. If you do nothing but the straight bar at this point, you're going to exhaust yourself too much. At this point, you're gonna open yourself up to the great world of variation and rotation. You're gonna start rotating exercises, trying new exercises out, doing waves for your training. You're gonna do things you used to scoff at in the past. You might even try some machines for certain body parts and find out that you like them. You're gonna add in some more isolation exercises because you simply can't improve your weak points with nothing but the bar anymore. You're going to start watching fitness content more for the enjoyment. And of course, you're gonna learn some stuff too. But at this point, you can teach the average newbie in the gym what actually works. A lot of guys here might become personal trainers. You might become a coach for a team if you have connections there, something like that. But now you wanna give back because you're out of your barbell supremacist phase. You're not all angry and upset at the industry anymore. You see the nonsense of the industry and then you wanna start helping people. This is the phase I was in whenever I started this channel, guys. I was kind of just laughing at the stuff and I said, hey, let me make this channel and talk about what's going on. Try to help some of these younger guys out to get them out of the dumpster that is novice purgatory. And then at this point, you don't care what anybody does. I go in the gym now, people are doing stupid stuff, half repping, shorting it, eh, whatever. I might help them if I really want to, if they ask me for help, go ahead. But people at this point now, guys, I was walking down the street the other day. Some guy literally walked up from behind me, tapped me on the shoulder and said, you go to the gym over there, right? I was like, yeah. He's like, dude, you look so good. Are you training for a competition? That's where I am now, guys. I'm not trying to brag here, but that really hit me. I've had multiple people in the gym and outside of the gym approach me about what do you do? What do you eat? Can you train me? Can we work out together? Things like that. That's the point I'm at now. And I'm happy to help people. Of course, I'm gonna charge them for my services, right? Tell them to bring me my money. But I'm happy to have a little conversation about, hey, your form's like this, or do this, or adjust this, or try to do this with your volume or your diet or something like that. I've accepted mentally that the industry is garbage, that the good people based on marketing alone are not going to ever outpace the people who lie and cheat and steal in their marketing. That's simply how it is. But I'm gonna help you as much as I can right? That's really what it is once you hit stage three. You're in good shape, you're strong, people notice that you're strong, people compliment your physique, you stand out in a crowd in close. You see what I'm saying? Like it's obvious that you lift to anybody and everybody. And at that point, once you no longer need that validation of like, yeah, well, I might not be the biggest and strongest, but I know how to use the barbell. I can do things the right way, the classic way, not all this new age woo woo bullshit, right? Once you reach this phase of stage three, you lose the ego attachment to it. I go to the gym because I enjoy it. It's what I love to do. I like meeting people there. That's really it. I'll help people out if I want to, or if I need to, but otherwise it's just fun. I see people doing goofy stuff, eh, do it more. Go ahead, eat your heart out, kid. You know what I mean? Once you get out of novice purgatory, you're gonna see the light too, but you can't really drag people out of that when they're in their fanboy phase. It's very hard to do that. You can try to kind of divert their eyes to the truth, but you can't totally change their mind, especially if they're very emotionally invested. Only time wasted and no results prolonged is going to do that. And then they find me and I charge them to help them. That's really it. But this has been it guys. Thank you for watching. Tell me if you agree or disagree in the comments down below. Like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, Road to 10K. Thank you for watching and I will catch you next time.